Those of you who watch this channel on a semi-regular basis, or if you're, you know, one of my giant, all-consumed, loyal fans, will be aware that I am a big fan of weird and wonderful video effects, particularly the kind of effects that you get from circuit bending old analog video enhancer devices. Now, naturally, that's not going to be an option for everybody. Uh, not every individual out there has the, you know, mental psychosis or the space to build out some stupid analog video rig like I have, you know, you can see just peeking over my shoulder in the background there. And so one of the questions that I'm commonly asked when I'm talking about video effects and stuff like that is whether or not there is a software alternative to achieve similar results. Now, until recently, I haven't really had a good answer to this because there aren't a huge number of great affordable options to do real-time video effects in this way. In the past, I have talked a wee bit about Lumen, which is a video synthesizer available on Mac. I've also talked about Cathodomer, which is a CRT simulator thing, but neither of them really do analog style video effects in real time in the way that people are really looking for. So this is why I was particularly excited to come across Photomosh Pro. I have to say thanks or give a shout out or whatever the fuck you want to call it to Brian Funk, who's on YouTube. I discovered Photomosh Pro through him. And at first, to be honest, I wasn't all that convinced about looking into it when he told me the name of the software because it seemed like it might just be a mobile app or something like that, which I'm definitely not interested in. However, as it turns out, when I took a look, this is actually a standalone dedicated video effects app which runs on both Windows and Mac, which is great because often people are asking me, you know, whether or not their software options are still stuck in the clutches of Microsoft and they can't use things like Lumen. So this is a great option for them. In terms of price, this comes in at about 58 US dollars when you include tax and everything else. It seems like a fairly reasonably priced option for a perpetual license, especially since there aren't, as I've said, a huge number of things that do this. And uh, if you look at something like Resolu Marina, then uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. Before I get into the meat and potatoes of this uh, video, it's worth saying that I've got no association whatsoever with the people that have made this app. I've never spoken to them. I don't even know who they are. It's not a sponsored video. I just think this seems like something pretty cool and it might be useful for you. Now here what you're looking at is the main screen of Photomosh Pro and uh, it's fairly straightforward. This is about as complicated as it gets, which I actually really like. It does have a lot of features in here, but the UI is really clean and simple. It's as straightforward, to be honest, as applying a filter in Instagram. Interestingly enough, one of the effects you can apply is an Instagram color effect. Now down the right hand side here, you can see uh, the host of different effects that are available. Uh, there are different parameters for each each one which you can modify. But before we get too far into that, the basics of this are that you load in your media or your content into the app, whether that is a video, whether that is a still image, or whether it is a webcam a stream, as you can see here from my moving face on this thing. And it also includes the audio. Formats like GIF, Move, MP4, JPEG, all of that sort of thing are supported. So, you know, it can handle most things that you're going to throw at it. It supports video files up to 4K, apparently, up to 60 frames per second. However, given my terrible internet access, if I was to shoot in 4K, it would take me a thousand years to upload any video. So I'm just sticking to 1080p and that's all I can vouch for at the moment. Now, taking the workflow at its most basic, all you do is select your video effects from the right hand side here and begin to turn them on or off using these wee uh, slider radio buttons. I don't know what the fuck you call them. I'm sure some software developer can tell me. And then you can modify the different parameters as you see fit for each one. So I don't know, we've got a weird feedback thing here, which you can then, you know, put more video feedback in. Uh, oh, look at that. You can also scale it. Yeah, I don't know, we've got data motion and all that kind of crap. There are a whole bunch of different options in here. I'm not going to go through them all. I'll show you a few in a wee minute. But what's interesting or important to note is that your first instinct or your first impression of this might be the same as mine, which was surely this is just going to end up like a collection of 90s style Photoshop filters where everybody was just applying the same kind of effect and it looked really cheesy. And yes, that can be the case if you just slap on a board 
born effect and a born video, then of course you're going to get something fairly uninspiring. However, once you start to look at some of the features, once you start to combine effects, once you realise that you can change the order that the effects are applied in, which means that it has a slightly different result, once you look at the masking options which allow you to mask out or kind of selectively apply different effects to different regions of your video, then everything starts to kind of take on a bit more creative possibility and using it with some of my video feedback loops that I've already created on my analog rig, I've been able to get some really cool things so I'm going to show you some of that. In order to demonstrate some of the effects that are in here, I'm going to load up one of my channel intro videos because it's a bit more interesting than this very flat webcam image because anytime you use a webcam, you don't get as interesting effects because it's very, I mean, look at it, it's not fucking, it's not what you want. So here, I'll just drop the video file in here and it's as simple as, you know, having that appear that way. I have to give you a caveat that what you're seeing here is going to be a bit laggy because I'm also recording the screen at the same time and it seems like even my M1 Mac can't handle the power of this. So, you know, just be aware that it'll look much better on your own screen. But let's try flipping on some of these uh, effects and see what it does, like this hard glitch, which is wild. Now, one of the important things to note is that each individual effect will have different parameters that you can change and that will drastically change the actual effect. So if you think that any of the effects in here are a bit too extreme, you can always, you know, pull them down a bit or, you know, make them even wilder depending on your particular preference. We have all sorts of things such as transformation. So just, uh, you know, shifting the position of the screen around. You can do things like sharpen it so that it is ludicrously overly sharp we of course have things like bleach effects, which is kind of like a bleach bypass effect if you're familiar with photography. Kaleidoscopes, which can be rotated and moved about and all that wonderful stuff. And then we have, you know, I don't know, colour effects, so halftone things where you can change the amount and the scale and all that stuff. Or you can even apply an effect which will turn everything into ASCII characters, which I think looks particularly awesome. Awesome. You can change the number of them, you can change the size, the colour, so it's kind of like a fucked up matrix effect. I don't really know, but I think it looks wonderful. And of course, we can combine all of these, we can move them around and get a really interesting kind of smorgasbord of effects. One of the most important ways, or one of the most effective ways, I guess I should say, of making this a bit more interesting and a bit less kind of stock cheesy filter-esque is that each individual effect, or at least most of the effects, can have their individual parameters modulated. So if we open up this transform effect, which is a very basic kind of, you know, you can move the position of the effect or the um, visual about on the screen. If we click on this kind of sine wave icon on the right hand side, you can see that this allows you to modulate the various parameters. So let's say, for example, position X, we can change it to sine wave, we can change the speed to make it go really fucking fast, we can make it go really quite slowly, we can change the chance, we can change whether or not it loops or it just does it once. It gives you a lot of interesting ways to change up and give variety to the various effects that are in there. Of course, you can modify or modulate more than one parameter at the same time and get all sorts of bizarre effects, which I'm really quite a fan of indeed. Within Photomosh Pro, you can save presets of different combinations. So if you find a set of effects that you really like, you can save it as a preset and then go back to it immediately. So this is one that I was playing about with earlier, which I became really quite fond of and I've saved this and I'm going to be using it for one of my channel introductions actually. And of course, you can always modify it later. You can add extra things in such as, I don't know, let's throw in an extra feedback module in here, which will really start to mess with my mind. This would not be something to watch whilst you're on magic mushrooms, although maybe it would be actually. Oh fuck, I'm kind of getting sucked into it just now. But you can see how the preset option would be particularly useful and with the default, you can always go back to it, hit default and it'll just take you back to the, you know, nothing applied as it were.
For the next portion of this demonstration, I have loaded in this rather wonderful image of myself, which was taken a few days ago when I was having work done on a back tattoo that I'm getting. Uh, at this very moment, I believe my spine was being tattooed, and as you can probably tell, I was having a whale of a time. Now, the reason I have loaded in an image in particular is so that I can show you one of the really interesting features about Photomosh Pro, which allows you to import an audio file and then have your different effects react to that. So if you go into settings, you can see under the audio tab that you can load in a single audio file. I've already loaded in this one, which is an 82 BPM drum loop that I created. You then go into the video tab, make the duration of your image, you know, longer than four seconds, which is the default. And then if I unmute this, you'll hear the drums in the background. Wonderful. Now I'm muting them at the moment so you can hear what I'm doing. Now to show you this in action, let's pick an effect, say jitter. Now if I turn this on, you can see it jittering away. However, if I want to time it to the music, I would go into the modulation icon and you can see down here on the left, the type, you choose audio and this will correspond to the different peaks within the audio and it works best I found when you have each individual one or you know, the majority of them all kind of synced up to the audio. So let's hear and see what that sounds like. So how fucking cool is that? Particularly because you can selectively apply the audio reactivity to individual parameters of different effects simultaneously so that that way you can kind of layer things up as you desire or see fit. Now the way that I'll probably be using this and which I think it's most useful is to take out a particular part of your musical composition. So say for example, the hi-hat or the kick drum, take that out as a stem, load it up into this application, run your video that you want to glitch up in time with the music, export that and then put it into Final Cut Pro or whatever. And then you'll have glitches in time with a particular element of your song, which just sounds and looks brilliant. Once you're done with your creation, you can export it in a variety of different ways so you can either just pull out a still image either a jpeg or a png or you can export the moving images as a video file whether that's an mp4 a gif or a webm i believe are the formats it supports you can export just a single file at once or you can bulk export and apply the effects you've got to multiple different videos at the same time which is quite a nice feature Alternatively, you can pop out this preview screen here and render it full screen on a separate kind of display, which allows you to either live stream or record it to something like OBS, or you can use it to perform live with, where you literally are changing the values in real time on the fly and applying it to the live video that's getting fed out to a projector or some other kind of capture device. One way that I'm gonna be making use of this feature is to capture the outputted video into my analog video rig and either, you know, glitch it up a bit more with my video enhancers or just drive it straight into my Roland P10 video sampler device to use live in a more interactive and hands-on way. Now I have been really pleased and pleasantly surprised I have to say with Photomosh Pro. I didn't expect it to be quite this straightforward but also have the kind of features that it does and I think it'd be a really useful tool for anybody that wants to do kind of real-time video effects glitching and stuff like that. However there are a couple of things that I think you need to be aware of and a couple of things which I would like to see them build out or improve upon. So I'm going to talk you through them just now. The first one is to be aware that these icons up here relate to the type of content you want to output, not the type of content that you're inputting. And that isn't necessarily all that intuitive at first because I thought that if I was going to drop a video in here, it would naturally switch over to the video icon. But actually what this does is let you output videos from an image input, for example. So if you are pulling in a still image, but you want to apply video effects, then you need to make sure you're on the video screen so that you can actually save a video. If you think, okay, I'm using an image, so I need to be on the image icon, then you're not going to be able to export an image. And that might be obvious to some of you, particularly because it says save as image over it. However, it wasn't obvious to me. So be aware of that when you go into it. 
The second thing is that you can't actually apply audio reactivity via a file that you load in if you're using the webcam. And that's a bit of a shame. I don't really understand why that is. I guess it's some kind of technical limitation, but it would be cool to see that option available. When it comes to audio input in particular, I think it'd be really great if the kind of capabilities were expanded there and that at the moment you can only apply and load in one individual audio file at a time. So that means that you can't really split up things like your melody or your high hat or your kick into different parameters and if you could load in different audio files and assign them to different effects parameters that would be amazing because then for example you could have the melt feature on your bass line you could have the bad tv glitching out in response to your kick drum you could have the hi-hat jiggling something else about or making the 3d colors kind of pop a wee bit so that would be uh, surely a fairly straightforward thing to add and something that would be a massive help for those of us that are doing kind of music related things the the final thing that I would love to see implemented in this, which I really think would take it to the next level, would be some kind of MIDI compatibility. As it stands, at the moment, if you want to change any of these parameters or enable or disable effects, you either have to do it manually with the mouse or you have to rely on some fairly limited keyboard shortcuts. Of course, you can use the modulation options. However, they can't be synced to any kind of MIDI clock, which is a bit of a shame. And for me, this really limits its usefulness as a live tool because I don't want to be clicking in these different effects and finding the parameters. Whereas if you had MIDI control, you could assign different CCs to the different effects parameters. You could take in a MIDI clock. You could have MIDI note values that would allow you to turn on and turn off different effects. It would just be incredible. And hopefully if the developers are watching this, maybe they'll consider it for a future iteration because I would gladly pay for an upgrade just to get that. So that is Photomosh Pro. I think it's a really useful app. If you're looking to do real time effects and you don't want to get into the world of analog video, or if you just want to have another tool in your arsenal this is definitely something to look at i genuinely think it's pretty fantastic go have a look at it and goodbye